All right, Karina baby, today is August the 2nd. Can you believe it? Mama can't believe it. Let's find out what storybook is for today in the year full of stories. And it's, for the second, it's air. Alright, so it says, air, air, everywhere. I can't see it, I can't hold it, but I know it's there. That's air for the second. And let's go back to our treasury full of fairy tales and find out what our next story is. Yesterday we did Rumpelstiltskin and Cinderella. Some good ones coming up. Alright. So, Ridener and the Fisherman is our next story for today. It was winter, and Ridener the Fox had no more food in his store. Driven by starvation, he roamed near the villages without fearing the inhibitions. He hid under a hedge at the side of the main road, waiting for something exciting to happen. Soon a little cart came along the road. In it were two fishermen who wanted to do business in the city. They had a huge catch of fresh herrings to sell, for the north wind had been blowing. Look at how cute! Oh my goodness! Doesn't it look so cute? Let's see what it is. Looks like a fox. Blowing. The whole week. And the fish were plentiful. They also had a basket filled with to the brim with fish, large and small, from the lakes and from the rivers. Pike, eel, carp, trout, and salmon. Reiner got very excited at the sight and the smell of the fish cart and decided that this was his chance. So he stretched himself out in the middle of the road as if he were dead. He put his feet in the air, closed his eyes, and held his breath. One of the fishermen noticed him and said to his partner, Let's pick up that fox. That's a good skin, easily gained. They approached Reinhard, cautiously touched him, and then turned him over, certain that he was dead. Then they estimated the value of his skin. He will sell for three silver pieces, said one. No, we will easily get four silver pieces for it. So said the other, maybe more. Look how white the throat is. Then they threw Reiner into the back of the cart and continued on their way, talking cheerfully. Reiner heard them talking and had a good laugh to himself at the bottom of the cart. He lay flat on his stomach on top of the basket, and with his sharp teeth, he nibbled at the juicy. What do you think he did? What did he do? Look at him. He's nibbling away because he's so hungry. So he pretended like he was dead. They threw him in the cart, thinking that they were going to get money for him. And then, see that fish? That fish is coming out of his mouth, right? He's eating that fish. See the tail? See the tail coming out? That's his fish now. That's his, because they threw him in the cart. They didn't check for a pulse or anything. Nibbled at a juicy herring. Then he, ate, then he ate 30 more. He crunched the raw fish, bones and all, between his teeth. It didn't bother Reiner that there was no salt, herbs, or mustard. The first basket was soon emptied. Then he started on the second one. He picked out half a dozen eels that were strung together through their gills to 
form a loop. Reinard put his head and throat through the loop. Then he arranged the eels securely on his back and jumped down from the cart. At the same time, shortly, uh, sh at the same time, shouting to the fisherman, "Goodbye and have a safe trip home. I only took a couple of eels, and I gladly leave you the rest." The fishermen jumped down to follow him, shaking their fists and hitting their heads. How could we have been so not smart? To the devil with this evil beast, they cried. But Reinhard ran much faster than they could and easily escaped. When they returned to their cart, completely exhausted, and they found, all they found were empty baskets. That was it. He took all the fish and he left, right? Because they thought that he wasn't there anymore. They thought he went up to heaven. All right. Rapunzel. Rapunzel, Rapunzel. Throw down your golden hair, right? Once upon a time, there was a man and a woman who had wanted a child for a long time. Then, one day, the woman believed that her wish would be granted at last. Their house had a little window at the back which looked out over a magnificent garden filled with beautiful flowers and all kinds of wonderful herbs and vegetables. The garden was surrounded by high walls and no one dared to go in because it belonged to the powerful witch. One day the woman stood at the window and looked into the garden and noticed a bed full of splendid radishes which looked so fresh and so delicious that she longed to eat them. The longing to eat these radishes grew stronger day by day. And since this honest woman knew she could never have them, she grew thinner and became pale and weak. Her husband came worried and asked, What is the matter, my dear wife? Alas, said she, if I cannot eat some radishes from the garden behind our house, I will die. Her husband, who loved her very much, said, I will not let you die, wife. At dusk, he climbed over the wall and went into the witch's garden, where he hastily picked a handful of radishes and brought them to his wife. Immediately, she made a salad out of them and greedily ate them. They tasted so delicious that the next day, her desire for more was even greater. To keep her contented, her husband knew he would have to be brave to go into the garden again. He waited until evening when it began to get dark. But when he jumped down from the wall, he found himself face to face with the witch. How dare you come into my garden and steal my radishes, she said fiercely. Alas, he replied, I did not come here by my own free will, but was forced to because of the danger that is threatening my wife. She saw your radishes from our window and had such a desire for them that she believed she would die if she could not eat them. Then the witch said, If everything you have told me is true, I will allow you to take as many radishes as you want. In return, you must give me... Look at this. Look at her. She's at the window. She's watching the radishes, right? What do you think the witch might want? The child your wife will bear. The child will have a good home and I will be a mother to it. The man was so terrified that he agreed to everything. That's something that happens a lot, baby. If someone has a stronghold over you, you tend to just agree and obey. Don't let people have that much of a stronghold over you because it doesn't fare out well for the person who has to agree and obey to just anything. And taking radishes because his wife wanted them there had to be some other place to get radish, radishes besides from the witch's garden right had to be when his wife gave birth to the little girl the witch came to their home and took the baby away with her she called her rapunzel rapunzel became the most beautiful little girl under the sun when she was 12 years old the witch locked her up in a tower in the middle of the forest the tower was neither had neither stairs nor doors only a little window at the top. Every time the witch wanted to go to the top of the tower, she stood underneath and cried out, 
Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel had wonderful long hair as fine as spun gold. Whenever she heard the witch calling, she unspun her hair, fastened it around one of the window hooks, and let it down, let it fall down to the ground. Then the witch climbed up the golden rope. It so happened that the king's son was riding through the forest one day as he passed nearby the tower. He heard such a glorious sound that he drew up his horse to listen. What do you think he heard? Look at the witch. The beautiful sound was Rapunzel trying to pass the time by singing. In vain, the prince looked for a door into the tower. However, the song had touched his heart so much that he returned to the forest every single day to listen to it. One day he saw the witch come from the foot of the tower. The prince hid behind the tree to watch and heard her say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel then let down her long braids and the witch climbed up. So that in the way, it, so that is the way into the tower, he said to himself. Well, if I just have to try my luck. The next day at dusk, he went to the tower and called up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Rapunzel's hair tumbled down immediately and the prince climbed up. At first, Rapunzel was terrified to see a strange man, but the prince told her gently that he had. Ooh, look at the hair that they're climbing up. Right? It's all braided, too. Braided like a rope. He had heard her singing and that his heart had been touched by her song. Rapunzel then forgot her fears and the prince asked if she would have him for her husband. She saw that he was young and handsome and thought, He loves me more than the old witch does. So she agreed and gave him her hand. The prince came to visit her every evening, and the witch, who only came during the day, knew nothing at all about it. Then one day Rapunzel said without thinking, Tell me how it is that you are slow and heavy and pull my hair, whereas the prince climbs up as up to me so quickly. You wicked child, cried the witch. What is that I hear? So you have deceived me. In her rage, she took Rapunzel's beautiful hair, wound it in a couple of times around her hand, and snip, snap, she quickly cut off, cut it off, and the golden hair and the marvelous braids fell to the floor. Oh my goodness, she cut that little girl's hair. Mm -mm. Without even asking her, she just took her hair and she cut it. That's not right, right? No, that's not right at all. Well, there she is. She's snipping at the hair. Then the witch took Rapunzel to the very remote place and abandoned her to live in loneliness. That evening at dusk fell, the witch hid herself in the tower. Soon the king's son arrived and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. When the witch heard this, she fastened poor Rapunzel's hair to the window hook and let it fall down to the ground. When the prince climbed up to the window, he found this wicked witch instead of his sweet Rapunzel. She looked at him with haunting evil eyes and said, Rapunzel is lost to you forever. You will not see her again. The prince was devastated. In his in his mercy in his misery he fell from the window and landed in a bramble bush he was not killed but the thorns on the bush made him blind unable to think of life without Rapunzel the young man wandered into the forest he lived on berries and roots and drafted it and drifted in this way for many years until one day he arrived by chance at the lonely place where Rapunzel lived in misery. He became blind, baby, from the bramble bush. All at once he heard a voice that was familiar to him and walked towards the sound. When he was close, Rapunzel recognized him. She was overjoyed to see him. 
but sad when she noticed his sightless eyes. She put her arms around his neck and wept. Two tears fell from her eyes into his eyes of the blind prince. Instantly, they became clear again, and he could see as he did before. Then, happily reunited with his love, he carried Rapunzel to the kingdom where they married and lived happily ever after. Ali Baba and the Forty Thieves Once upon a time, in a Parisian city, there lived two brothers who loved each other very much and often visited each other. One was a merchant called called Kasim, and the other was a woodcutter called Ali Baba. One day on his way to the forest with his three donkeys, Ali Baba saw a cloud of dust in the distance. It was undoubtedly a large and possibly unfriendly group of horsemen because the very few people passed along the road since he was afraid of being robbed. Ali Baba looked for a hiding place. Oh, look at that. He found a place in the trees, right? And people usually don't look up. Papa taught me that. And you see these men? What are they not doing? They're not looking up. They're looking around them, but they, no one, a lot of people don't look up anymore. Now, far away in a very high rock, next to which stood a tall tree, Ali Baba hid his donkeys, climbed into the tree, and waited. The cloud of dust quickly became bigger, and soon the group arrived. They were 40 men, each carrying a big bag on his shoulders. The men jumped down from the horses and tied them next to the rocks. Then the leader approached the rocks and cried, Open Sesame! To Ali Baba's astonishment, a door opened in the rock face. The man disappeared into the cave and the door closed behind him. Ali Baba stayed in the tree, not daring to climb down right away. While he was thinking what to do next, the door opened again. The man came out, and the leader commanded the door, Close, Sesame! It rumbled shut. Then the man mounted the horses again and rode off. When they were far away, Ali Baba climbed down from the tree, stood in front of the rock, and after hesitating for a time, he also cried out, Open sesame! Once again, the rock face opened, and Ali Baba. Ooh, look what he found. Did he find a treasure chest or what? The thing is, though, that's not his treasure. That's somebody else's treasure. Walked into the most amazing cave. There was enough light inside to see the collection of fabulous treasures. Silk materials, rich fabrics, carpets, and all... Above all, bags overflowing with gold and silver. It was obviously the secret hideout of the group of robbers. After Ali Baba had recognized, well, recovered from his astonishment, he gathered as much gold as his three donkeys could carry and closed the cave with the magic words, which were, Close Sesame! When he arrived home, he emptied the bags in front of his wife, who was dazzled by the gold. He then told her all about his adventure. We are rich, she cried, dancing and clapping her hands. But how much exactly do we have? Enough to live in peace for the rest of our days, answered Ali Baba. I want to be sure. We must count it, his wife demanded. Ali Baba did not see any reason for this, but he did not want to upset his wife, so he let her have her way. She immediately went to the chas to Chasm to ask him for a measuring cup. Chasm's wife opened the door. A measuring cup, she asked. Yes, the biggest one you have, replied Al Ali Baba's wife. Chasm's wife lent her the cup, but she secretly stuck some candle wax in the bottom. Um, Chasm's wife lent her the measuring cup, but she secretly stuck some candle wax on the bottom because she wanted to know what there was to measure at the poor woodcutter's house. So, she's being what? She's being nosy, right? She's not giving this person her privacy like she should have. You always let people have their own 
life in their own privacy. It's not good to do what she's doing. What she's doing, if she wanted to know, she should have asked. And if she didn't get an answer and the person just didn't want to give the answer, she doesn't need to know. When Alibaba's wife returned home, she began to scoop up the gold. Oh, kitten. With the cup. She filled it. I'll be right back. Hold on. Oh, your puppy. Come on, puppy. You can come in. I thought that you were kitten. All right. You could come in. All right. Good job, baby. How are you? Walked into the most amazing oh, at the woodcutter's house. When Alibaba's wife returned home, she began to scoop up the gold with the cup. She filled it once, twice, many times. A little while later, she returned the cup to her sister-in-law. But in her hurry, she did not notice that there was a gold piece stuck to the bottom. When Chasm came home, his wife said, Sit down here. I have something to tell you. What is it? asked Chasm. Chasm, do you know you are rich? she said. Enough to be happy, he replied. So he he's already rich in his heart, right? He's like, enough to be happy, right? So he's already happy. Well, Ali Baba is a thousand times richer than you are, said his wife. He had so much gold at home that he needed a measuring cup to count it. And she showed him the gold piece. Chasm, who was a bit jealous, oh, now he got jealousy in his heart. That's not good. Went to his brother's house and said, Tell me, I beg you, how you have so much gold at your house. Alibaba realized his secret had been discovered. And because he loved his brother, he told him everything, including the magic words to open the door to the thieves' hideout. Chasm thanked him. Early the next morning, he set out with ten mules to find the rock. Open sesame, he cried when he reached it. The door opened. He went inside, and the door closed behind him. For a moment, he was astonished by all the glittering treasure. Then he pulled himself together and began to fill the bags. When they were full, he tried to leave the cave, but he couldn't remember the magic words. Open org, he tried. The door stayed closed. He tried again and again. No matter what words he used, he could not think of the right one. So hours later, he was still locked in. Chasm was so greedy and he was so astonished, right, by what had just occurred that he couldn't even remember the words to get out. So he got stuck inside the cave. As, as ill luck would have it, the thieves arrived at the cave. When they opened the magic door, Chasm took the chance to escape. He was caught immediately by the thieves who killed him on the spot and cut him up into four pieces. The next day, Alibaba came to the rock in search of his brother. To his horror, he discovers his brother's remains. Weeping with shock and grief, he put the four pieces that were left of his brother on the donkey and returned home to Chasm window to tell his to tell her dreadful news oh to chasm's widow to tell her the dreadful news now chasm had a very clever secret now chasm had a very clever servant whose name was morgan morgan morgani we will have to cover up the true reason for Chasm's death, said Alibaba. Don't worry, I know how to handle that, she replied. The next day, the servants went several times to the chemist, pretending that her master had fallen ill. Each time she asked for stronger and stronger medications, saying that he was going from bad to worse. They followed up. The following day, no one was surprised, therefore, to hear that Chasm had died. Alas, in the city lived a very old, very, very wise garment maker called Baba Mustafa. Morgans asked him to come to her in secret. 
bringing the tools of his trade. Baba Mortafia, who was suspicious, did not agree to do so unless he was given a large sum of money. He was then blindfolded and led into, the ca into Chasm's room. There, Morgan took off the blindfold and asked him to sew her poor master's body back together. Baba Mustafa did so, and after he was finished, he was blindfolded again and taken home. In this way, Chasm had a dignified funeral, and no one was the least suspicious. Ali Baba inherited his brother's house, and he liked that house better than his own. He moved in with his wife, and they lived together with Chasm's widow and Morgania, the servant. In the meantime, the forty thieves had not forgotten the intruder in their cave. Someone else knows our secret, said the leader. The pile of gold is smaller. Who will go into the city to see what can be found out? One of the thieves volunteered and left early the next morning in disguise. He soon found Baba's, Baba Mustafia's shop in which the old wise man was busy with his work. Good man, the thief said to the old man. How can you still see so clearly, clearly at your age? Uh, I can see that you are not from around here, said Baba Mustafa. My eyes are the best in the city. Why not long ago I sewed a dead man back together in a room much darker than this? Go on. Where was that? asked the thief. I don't know. I was taken there blindfolded, replied Baba Mustafa. The thief held out a couple of gold pieces. Take me there. I told you I was blindfolded, said Baba Mustafa. There he is. Try to remember in which direction you were led, pressed the thief. Baba Mustafa accepted the challenge, and he had a good memory. They soon arrived in front of Chasm's house, which was now Ali Baba's. The thief thanked Baba Mustafa. Then he secretly made a cross with chalk on the door and went back to the forest. Shortly afterwards, Morgania discovered the mark. She assumed that this mark was not a good sign. So she took the piece of chalk of the same color and drew crosses on all the other doors in the neighborhood. That same night, the forty thieves sne sneaked into the city, then looked for the door marked with the cross, intending to kill the people who lived there. But when they found that every door had a cross, they left the gr in great anger. The following day, the leader decided to take things into his own hands. He, too, found Baba Mustafa, who led him to Ali Baba's house. The leader examined it closely, and very soon he had an idea. When he got back to the forest, he sent his men to buy some mules and forty leather oil jars. When everything had been brought to the leader, filled one of the jars with oil, leaving the others empty. Then he ordered all the men into the empty jars. And then, then he sealed them, leaving just one a little air hole in the lid. But next he drove his strange convoy into the city. Ali Baba was enjoying the cool night air when the leader of the thieves stopped outside pretending that he was an oil merchant bound for market the following day. He said that he had come a long distance and was very tired. Ali Baba did not recognize him at all. You are welcome here, Ali Baba said. Come into my house and spend the night. The fake merchant put his jars in the courtyard under the window of the room where he would be staying. While Ali Baba was out of earshot, the leader went to each jar and gave his orders. Can you hear me? When I throw this little stone out of my window, split the vase from head to top to bottom, with your knives and get out. I will then tell you what to do. He went to bed early, keeping all of his clothes on, ready for action. Meanwhile, Morgania was working in the kitchen when her oil lamp suddenly went out. Oh, what a time to run out of oil, she cried. Well, go into the courtyard, said Ali Ab Abdelia, another servant. 
There is plenty of oil as long as the merchant is here. So Mogani took the jug and went outside. When she approached the first jar, she heard, Hey, is it time? That voice certainly came from the jar. Alright, so see them getting into the jar? And then, look at this. He's going to tell them what to do. Morgania, who was quite a quick thinker, realized the danger immediately and answered in a whisper, Not yet, but soon. She went to the other jars, hearing the same question and giving them the same answer until she found the oil jar. First, she lit her lamp again. Then she poured the oil from the last jar into the large copper pan, which she put on the stove until it boiled. Then she poured boiling oil into each jar, killing all of the thieves quickly and quietly. Later, when the leader of the thieves threw the little stone out the window, he was angry that there was no response. He went outside to take up the thieves, but when he smelled the hot oil and leather, he thought it wiser to leave quickly. The next morning, when Ali Baba came back from the bathhouse, he was surprised to see the jars still in his courtyard. Morgani told him to open one of them, and when he saw what was in it, he jumped back in fright. Then the servant told him about how she heard rescued them for, and his family. Ali Baba realized that the man in the jar must have been the thieves from the cave with the magic door. As a reward, he gave Morgania her freedom. He buried the bodies, sold the mules, and carefully hid the weapons and the leather jars. However, although the leader of the thieves had run off, he was not that far away. He longed to take his revenge on the man who had invaded his horde and destroyed his gang. In a little while, he returned to the city, renting a shop, and became a cloth merchant, calling himself Kangia Hossian. He made it his business to become very friendly with Ali Baba's son. He was extremely courteous to the young man and finally succeeded in being invited to his father's house. Ali Baba invited his son's new friends to stay for dinner, but the man refused. Why do you refuse? said Ali Baba, surprised. It is because I only eat food without salt, and this creates too much trouble for the people who invite me. So the phony merchant, that makes no difference to me, cried Ali Baba. I can offer you a meal without salt. Come on, I beg you. Do me the honor and stay. The man then attempted. Morgani was annoyed that she had to start all over again. The man then accepted. Morgani was annoyed that she had to start all over again preparing food without salt. But she did so as she was asked. She thought the guest must be a very strange man to make such demands. Under the pretext of helping Ab uh, Abdulia, she served at the table so that she could take a look at the stranger. Morgani was more perceptive than Ali Baba. She recognized the cruel leader of the thieves straight away, even though he was disguised as a cloth merchant. She saw the knife he was hiding under his clothes and devised a very bold plan. When they had eaten the dessert, she dressed herself up as a dancer with a sword fixed to her belt, and if it was part of the co as if it was part of the costume, Adulia accompanied her playing a trombone as if it were part of the dance. Morgania drew the sword from her from its sheath. Ali Baba was delighted. He let her dance for a long time, thinking to entertain his guest, who was actually waiting for the right moment to kill him, as was the custom. When the dance was over, Ali Baba took the hollow turbone to collect some money. Ali Baba threw in one gold piece, and the leader of the thieves took out his pouch to find one, too. While he was fumbling with his pouch, Morgania thrust the sword deep into his throat. He died instantly. Once again, Morgania had uncovered the evil plot of the thieves leader, and Ali Baba was determined to reward her richly. 
A few days later, a magnificent feast was held to celebrate the wedding of his son in Morgania. Ali Baba let an entire year pass by, then as there appeared no reason to fear further roof tiles, he mounted his horse and rode to the thief caves. He cried the words out, Open sesame. Look at that. See the shadow of the knife? The door opened and Ali Baba found all the treasure as he had last seen it. Now he was the only one who knew the secret. He loaded his horse with gold and returned home. At last he called his son and told him of his adventure from beginning to end, including the magic words. And so that was how Ali Baba and his offspring passed the secret from father to son. They lived in great splendor to the end of their days, and they were loved and honored by the entire city. Oh my. All right, Karina Baby, tomorrow's going to be the little tailor. Let's do a song. Look at that. We're already more than halfway through this book. All right. How about... It's raining outside today off and on, so let's do We Sit and Watch the Rain. As it falls from the sky And we are glad to be inside Where it is warm and dry Oh yes, I do love the rain It keeps the earth so clean And helps the pretty flowers grow From the mountains to the streams Swing low, sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, come and forth and carry me home. Well, I looked over Jordan and what did I see? Come and forth to carry me home. A band of angels coming after me, coming forth and carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth and carry me home. Well, sometimes I'm out. And sometimes I'm down Come on forth to carry me home But still I feel my soul is heavenly bound Come on forth and carry me home Swing low Sweet chariot Come on forth to carry me home Swing low Sweet chariot Come and forth and carry me home now if you get there before I do. Come and forth to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'll be coming there too. Come and forth and carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth to carry me home. Swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home. I'll be coming home, coming home, coming home to you. Come and forth to carry me home. You know my word is good, you know my word is true. Come and forth and carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot. Come and forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth and carry me home. Grand baby mama loves you. 
I love you more than anything in this entire world, and I miss you. I miss you so much. Still by the toe, and good night to you. By the toe, may your dreams come true. We sing by the toe, may Israel protect you throughout the night. Until we reach the morning light. You know, baby, your mama will always love you. So will your papa. I love you so incredibly much. I never wanted to leave your side, not a single day. Every single day, I think this is what I'm doing is fed of spending time with you. It's crazy. I love you. I miss you. I miss you so much. I can't wait to see you, baby. I love you. Have a beautiful day. Have a good night, baby. I love you.